So hi everyone and uh, welcome to this particular video going through uh, a first, at least the first uh, part of our series on testing for non-station, for stationarity, uh, which is the Dickey-Fuller test. So if you recall in this particular module that we've been having so far, we mentioned that stationarity was sort of this big integral part of time series and ideally we would want series to be stationary. I mean, in a sense, they're much easier to deal with if a series is stationary than if it were not stationary. Now, we also discussed this concept of unit roots, which we sort of said was analogous or quite heavily related to this concept of stationarity. And uh, as we move uh, in this particular module, what we're gonna show is that there are tests for non-stationarity or stationarity tests and there are tests for the presence or absence of unit roots. And we'll learn to distinguish these two particular um, uh, instances. So the first uh, test that we'll discuss is called the Dickey-Fuller test. So there is an augmented Dickey-Fuller test, which we will discuss in the next video. But for this video, we're just going to use the base Dickey-Fuller test. So this is sort of like the classical test that most people are aware of when they're, uh, when they're sort of learning uh, these tests for stationarity. So how does this Dickey-Fuller test work, right? So this test essentially examines the value of phi, phi being an autoregressive uh, coefficient. And in particular, it tests the null hypothesis that phi is equal to one against the alternative that phi is less than one. So in practice, this test implores the use of a, a difference form, which is this particular difference form. So you might ask, well, how was this derived? Well, it's simple. So you start from an AR1, from an AR1, okay? So say we have an AR1, yt is equal to phi uh, yt minus one plus ut. Okay, so say you have that, and then I just uh, subtract, yt minus one from both sides, okay, both sides, okay, and uh, you have yt minus yt minus one, that's for me to get the difference form, phi yt minus one plus, uh, sorry, minus yt minus one plus ut. Then I know that this is equal to delta yt, which is the difference form, that's just yt minus yt minus one, and I'm going to collect this, okay? So that's factor phi minus one, yt minus one plus ut. And I'm going to call this phi minus one as this psi. So basically that yields me delta yt is equal to psi yt minus one plus ut, which is what we have here, right? So that's the uh, working difference form that we're going to be using for this sticky footer test. So that's basically what I said and what I derived. In this case, this is equal to phi minus one. So if you think about it, okay, null hypothesis is that the phi is equal to one, which implies that this psi is equal to zero, right? So I'm essentially saying that this is not related to this. That's the null hypothesis. And the alternative, okay, is that uh, psi is less than one, if this is a number less than one, say this is 0.5, this will be some negative number, right? And this implies that this is less than zero. Okay, so that's what we have. Okay, likewise, right, the tests can be extended further to accommodate the inclusion of an intercept and a deterministic time thread. So what we had earlier was the lack of an intercept and the lack of a deterministic time trend, but of course it can work in those instances too. So say we have this particular model with both of them, okay? We use that difference form. And as with the base difference equation, the null and, her, uh, null and alternative hypothesis are determined in this particular manner, if that is equal to zero, and if that is not equal to zero, basically. Just to be more general about it as a two-tailed test, right? So while this may be, um, so this is true, what we're gonna just gonna do is just gonna generalize it as equal to zero and not equal to zero, okay? So that's what we have as our null and alternative hypothesis for the base Dickey-Fuller test. Okay, and uh, what we have here, okay, is 
if the value of uh, this psi term is equal to zero, then it must be that the phi is equal to one, which we know, okay, is, okay, is a station, isn't a uh, sort of not precludes, but sort of uh, suggests, okay, suggests a non-stationary series, okay? That is the, the series is non-stationary because that phi being equal to one indicates a unit root and that will suggest a non-stationary series as such, a rejection of the null hypothesis suggests that the series is stationary. Okay, so if we reject the null hypothesis, then the series is stationary. So that's the basically Fuller test. Not really all, all that difficult to understand. We just use a different form of LAR and test the value of that psi term. That's about it. In the next video, we're gonna sort of discuss the augmented decay Fuller test, which solves something that we may have sort of skipped over in this particular video, which is a glaring problem of the base sticky fuller test. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.